Hello guys, welcome to another prophecy video. You know, on this channel, I talk about different things, uh, poetry, music, you know, anything that has to do with the power of the gospel, the real, the actual spoken word. And, and it is in that sense that, you know, I just want to, to, you know, share the gospel through poetry, through spoken word, but also through the Bible, the word of God. Now, obviously, if you're new here, consider subscribing and liking the video so that you are always updated whenever I share another video like this one. So today we're going to be talking about the doctrine of discovery and it's something that I heard today actually so it's really interesting. This is more like an emergency video that just came out and uh, I hope that we're going to learn a lot together. But by now we all have heard of the devastating news of the of the discovery of the 215 remains of the children that they found at the Kamloops residential school it's just so heartbreaking to, to even imagine what uh, the indigenous community went through and, and even what they continue to go through in their daily lives it's just there's there's just there's just abuse and mistreatment everywhere you go uh, when it comes to the indigenous people and they and like reports show they're the most marginalized in canada obviously the many other 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 people that are marginalized because this world is not equal it seems this world is not fair it seems and and we keep pushing for fairness and freedom but it just seems to never get there and you wonder why why do we have to even be talking about this and so when I was going through my social studies, I never understood why people would just, you know, stripe away or just take away uh, children from their parents by force in the name of re-education. And you know, what, what, make, what, what just baffles my mind is that religion was involved. The church was involved. And it just, does, just doesn't make sense. Because when I read my Bible, the Bible... The Bible does in no way teach, condone this practice of, you know, killing people, mistreating people, abusing people. The Bible never teaches that. So where did this whole thing come from? And I want you guys to listen to a clip by Chief Norman Yakelea, who is a member of the uh, Legisl Legislative Assembly of the Northwest Territories and also Chief of the D Dene Nation. And uh, he says something that's very particularly interesting and that's what we'll be studying today, the doctrine of discovery. Let's study what this is and how, as we process this whole news, this, this whole hard truth, as we process it, let's discover where did all this thing originate and where should we move on forward and how should we process this whole thing? So listen to this clip and we're just going to jump into discussing the doctrine of discovery. The schools themselves are a thing of the past. The last ones closed in the mid-1990s, I believe. But can you tell our international audience the ways in which Indigenous people in Canada are still marginalised today in, in 2021? Thank you. The last residential school was closed in the new called the Groyer Hall Residential School, which was notorious for over 20 years of sexual physical abuse on the young boys by the residential school and our girls there. And we want to show that the residential schools in Canada that have been exposed, over 130 of them, that certainly it started with the doctrine of discovery mm. and came to Canada, that the doctrine of discovery said that the indigenous people were not people and that when they came over, it gave the right to the Europeans, people in England, Spain, the right to come on our land without recognizing and respecting that for thousands and thousands of years, there were indigenous people living here with our own societies, mm. our laws, our language. But that doctrine is a dangerous doctrine and that the Crown 
the king of England and the churches use that to put their way of thoughts, life upon us and to make us something we are not. And so he mentioned something called the doctrine of discovery. And as soon as he mentioned that, I was like, what is this doctrine of discovery? So I Googled it and here's what I found. I want you guys to pay careful attention because this is like mind blowing. This is crazy if you think about it. So here's what he says on Google. I found this from, uh, I'll share the link in the description, but I think the, the website is called Upstander Project. Upstander Project. Well, here's what he says. The doctrine of discovery established a spiritual, political, and legal justification for colonization and seizure of land not inhabited by, wait for it, Christians. What? Doesn't make sense. So this thing was done by so-called Christians. And I say so-called Christians because th whoever wrote this, whoever came up with this, were not true Christians. If anything, even if the people were your enemies, the Bible says, love your enemies. And it says, love your neighbor as yourself. How is that loving your neighbor as yourself? So it doesn't make sense. How is that loving your neighbor as yourself? Christians. Christians propagated this. And this reminds me that not all who say are Christians are Christians. And Jesus uses this phrase. He says, not all who say are Jews are Jews. And Paul adds, not all, no, a Jew is not a Jew who is a Jew outwardly so so there's people who claim to be christians but are not christians have a different agenda altogether that's why we have the antichrist and we're going to get into that in a moment but it says here it continues foundational elements of the doctrine of discovery can be found in a series of papal bulls what are papal bulls where they explain or decrees so these are decrees that the pope gave with so-called backing of authority and scripture and whatever they say, beginning in the 1100s, which included sanctions, enforcements, authorizations, expulsions, and admonitions, excommunications, denunciations, and expressions of territorial sovereignty for Christian monarchs supported by the Catholic Church. So the Catholic Church supported all these things in the name that they had authority or power to say. This is dangerous, friends. And they claim to be Christians. And they claim this to be God's will. That's what hurts me the most. They are misrepresenting who God is. And it continues to say, two papal bulls in particular stand out. And we can check these out from other sources. I'm not making this up. I'm just reading what's online. Pope Nicholas V issued Romanus Pontifex in 1455, granting the Portuguese a, a monopoly of trade with Africa and, author and authorizing the enslavement of local people. Wow. And number two, Pope Alexander V1, which is I think six, issued the papal bull Intercatera, I hope I pronounced that right, Intercatera in 1493 to justify Christian European explorers' claims on land and waterways they allegedly discovered and promote Christian domination and superiority and has been applied in Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and the Americas. This is insane. And it continues, says, if an explorer proclaims to have discovered the land in the name of a Christian European monarch, plants a flag in its soil and reports his discovery to the European rulers and retains occupied, the land is now his. Even if, even if someone else was there first, should the original occupants insist on claiming that the land is theirs, the discoverer can label the occupants way of being on the land inadequate according to the European standards. Wow, these are man-made standards. These are not Bible standards. These are not God's standards. This ideology, this ideology supported the dehumanization of those living on the land and their disposition, murder and forced assimilation. And we're just talking about forced assimilation, how they took these kids into these schools to, to quote-unquote teach them 
a good way. Well, that's, that, it doesn't make sense. You can't force something that's good. That's the whole point. You can't force something that's good. The doctrine fueled white supremacy in so far as white European settlers claimed they were instruments of divine design. And I hate this. They claim God was backing them up, that they were instruments of divine design. There's no divine design. If anything, we see doctrines of devils here. And the Bible says that many shall depart from the faith and shall uh, take heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. These, my friends, you don't have to be Christian to agree with me. This so-called doctrine of discovery is a doctrine of the devil himself. Because God does not force people. God is love. And there's no love here. There's no love happening here. And so when I read, and I was surprised at this, you can, you can go read other sources. But this just outlines the danger of taking human tradition above God's word. It's just so sad because not, like we've seen, there's nothing in here godly. There's nothing good about this whole mess. It's really a mess, and it has just caused tragedy and disaster everywhere you go. And like I said, Jesus never uses force. If anything, in Matthew 13, he, he's represented, he represents himself as the sower who went forth, forth to sow. You know, the Jews expected Jesus, or the, the, uh, the Israelites, uh, the Jews really expected Jesus to be this Messiah who was going to, you know, throw everybody off and take over the land by force and do whatever the, he, he can do. But Jesus said, no, I'm a sower. I sow seeds. I speak to people. I have conversations. I, I, I tell them I'm the truth, the way, and the life. And they decide if they want to follow me or not. I don't force anyone. And imagine, imagine if these, these uh, people had come in and had conversations with these people and told them about what they think is good. But no, they thought they knew it all. And so they came and took over doctrines of devils at work. And this is sad, and it's really because of the position of the Roman Catholic Church. And, and I'm not making this up. We've all read that the Roman Catholic Church had, had, uh, had a part, a greater part in whatever happened here. And it's because the Roman Church believes that tradition can be above the Bible. It just doesn't make sense. They say the Bible is there, but it needs something else. We need tradition. And in fact, let me, not, let, let me not say it. I'll just read from their website and you can follow along as well. So from their website, it says Protestants. These will be people who protested against the Roman Catholic Church, uh, including well-known Martin Luther, who printed 95 reasons why he protested. And those reasons are still standing today. You can th check them out. Rome hasn't changed a thing about those things. Well, it continues to say, Protestants claim the Bible is the only rule of faith. Yes, it is. Meaning that it contains all the material one needs for theology and that this material is sufficiently clear that one does not need apostolic tradition or the church's magisterium, which is teaching authority, to help one understand it. Yes, I believe that. You don't need church authority, whatever, to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible is God's letter to you. You can read it and you can understand it. You don't need anyone to understand the Bible. But well, they say otherwise. It continues to say, in the Protestant view, the whole of Christian truth is found within the Bible pages. Anything extraneous to the Bible is simply non-authoritative, unnecessary, or wrong. Well, I wouldn't say that. I would say, yes, everything, everything which is the authority of our truth is found in the Bible, but that doesn't make anything outside wrong, because there could be a person outside who's saying the truth, and so long as they match what the Bible says, they are right. But if you say something that's opposing the Bible, then you are wrong. But let me, let me let them say what they want to say. Catholics, on the other hand, recognize that the true rule of faith as expressed in the Bible itself is scripture plus apostolic tradition as manifested in the living teaching authority of the Catholic Church to which were entrusted the oral teachings of Jesus and the apostles along with the authority to interpret scripture. 
this is wrong. Nobody gave anybody authority to interpret anything here. There's nothing here that needs any interpretation. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. What is there to interpret? And, and it's because, because we think we have to interpret everything, that we, we, we give ourselves room to manipulate the Bible and make it say what it didn't say. Like this doctrine of discovery doesn't make sense. So they said, Bible plus tradition. Yet Jesus Christ in Matthew 15 verse 9 says, But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. See, if you teach your own commandments, your own traditions, and you claim to worship Jesus, Jesus doesn't recognize you. You can't be of Jesus. And if you read the book of Revelation, Jesus deals with this. He says there are people who claim to be Christians but are liars. And Jesus says he's going to come and fight you. He will, though. He will. Because this is, this is just absurd. And the sad thing is that many Protestants now are uniting again with Rome. Yet Rome hasn't changed. But people are uniting with Rome despite the many inconsistencies that Rome still has not given up. And, and most of these things are like Sunday observance. Yes, Sunday. I know that most of the Christian, uh, Christian world go to church on Sunday, but that's a tradition. It's not supported in the Bible anywhere else. The Catholic Church claims, says that it is mark of their power. The reason why the other churches are able to follow that is, and they, they point to that and say, that is, that's a sign that we are, we are the ones in charge. We control everything here. So there's Sunday observance. There's things like forgiveness of sins, this idea of going to a priest to be forgiven. When Jesus says all you have to do is just say our Heavenly Father, which are in heaven. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's done. You don't need another medium through which to go through. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. But they're not willing to give that up. And there are so many other doctrines. You can go check out their website and see if whatever they say is, is according to the Bible. And this is not an attack on anyone, but it's really processing the truth. What led to all this mess we are in? What led to these um, to the development of the residential schools? What's the idea behind it? And this just shows that it's not necessarily what we do. It's also about what we believe in. What do we believe in makes a difference. I'm sure there are people who just went along with it, with this idea of the doctrine of, of, of uh, discovery just because it was the thing of that time, just because it was instilled in their minds. And that's why we have to be Bible-based. Because if, if you believe anything else that's not from the Bible, my friend, there's nothing that you won't be able to do. You're going to concult things that are just insane and you're going to attribute, uh, attribute them to God. It's just sad because when you look at this doctrine of discovery, you see that not only has it caused grief and loss to the indigenous people, but it has also caused slavery in Africa, for example. Uh, white supremacy, we read, that hinges on this idea that somehow Christians are better than everybody else. And because of that, everybody else must be forced to this Christian uh, experience. It doesn't make sense. And that's what's coming ahead. Today we have freedom to worship, right? But soon, according to the Bible, there's a power that's going to force everybody to worship a certain way. And failure to do that, they're going to be persecuted. They're going to be killed. It's not me saying it. Let me actually read it for you. It's found here in Revelation chapter, uh, chapter 13. The book is Revelation chapter 13. We read about this beast that rises out of the sea that has seven heads and ten horns just indescribable and from a studying of the bible we find that this is none other than rome itself uh, because rome if you study this chapter yourself you find that it has all the characteristics including this characteristic found in verse 15 uh, and says there he was granted power Actually, this is speaking about the second beast that comes afterwards. But in any case, verse 16 says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark 
or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And it says his wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is a number of a man. And there's many resources I can give you about who is this mark of the beast and who is this beast. But for now, I just want to address this issue that, that you know, if we don't believe in the Bible and the Bible alone, we are doomed to be deceived and we are doomed to create erroneous ideas, doctrines of devils. And so at the close, uh, the chief, the chief of the, uh, of the Dene nation finished off by calling the Pope to apologize. And it's not me. He did it because he understands what happened. This is pure history. The Pope, not the Pope that's present right now. Maybe he wasn't there at the time. But the papacy itself, the system, which never changes, really. He, they're being called to apologize. And they've been calling them to apologize, but they have not apologized yet. And I wish Rome could change. And perhaps maybe Pope is going to come and, you know, have some dialogue and see if they can work things out. But the spirit of the Pope, not the Pope, the person, but the spirit of the papacy, it seems to never change. According to the Bible, it doesn't change. If you read Revelation 13, this system, maybe, maybe if one person refuses to do it, another person will come and do it. But the Bible prophecy talks about what happens when church and state combines. And this is the next point I just want to finish on. Whenever church and state happen, meets together, when you give a religious person political power, he's going to force everybody to believe like he believes. I'm not sure if you've noticed that anywhere. But it has happened in the past and it's going to happen again. This idea of residential schools was an attempt to force religion on everyone. On, on everyone. Imagine the kids that were forced into these schools. It, they didn't care what they believed. The languages they spoke. They just say, everybody, this is the way. But that's not how it works, though. You don't force people. There has to be freedom of choice. And God is a God of love that gives freedom of choice. You choose the way that you want. But there are two ways, life and death. You decide. I shouldn't decide for you. If I decide for you, I'm breaking the barrier. I'm going uh, way ahead. I'm, I'm being too extreme. And it's going to happen again. And friends, I just in closing, I just want to encourage you to read the book, The Great Controversy. It's a book that has helped me a lot to just process what's going on in our world. The wars, the rumors of wars, the the natural disasters and all these crazy things, the atrocities of the past that has happened. And as I was reading the book, Great Controversy, it just showed me that there's a greater controversy going on between good and evil, and we are involved. And then there are people, systems in place, really that form the representations of these controversies on earth. Like you read in Revelation, there's a beast whom uh, the dragon, which is Satan, gives its great seat and its great authority. And we know that to be the Roman power. All Protestants believe that. And I still believe that because the Bible says it. And, and Rome never changes, it seems. And it continues to want to do more harm in the name of good. That's why it's so hard to catch. That's why it's so hard to see. If, if, you, if you learn more about the doctrine of, of discovery, they may give you justifications for it. They may say, well, you see, the Bible says, and they quote scripture out of context to confuse you. But if you know the Bible, you will not be deceived. And so in closing, I encourage you to read that book, Great Controversy, to know what's coming ahead. And stay tuned for the next video where I'll be talking about what happens when church and state combines. And Really, I'll be talking about the freedom of speech, not the freedom of speech, really, but the freedom of conscience. I'll be talking about this, the, the freedom of liberty of conscience, the ability to be able to choose for yourself. What, what's, what's happened to that and where are we heading, right? Because it seems like we're, <laughs> it seems like we're going in the future, right? But in reality, we're going back to the past. And, and it's sad. We need to know our history because, like they say, 
If you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it. But even the Bible has taught us, even though we know all the history, it seems that the thing that hath been, says the wise man, is the same that shall be. And there is no new thing under the sun. I hope you like this video. I know it was relatively longer, but we had to just process this. And in closing, I do grieve with all the families, the indigenous community, and all people going through atrocities, especially those who are being persecuted, who are being mistreated in the name of religion or Jesus or any other name that, that you can come up with. It just does not make sense. God is love. And we should stop misrepresenting God. God is love. And no matter how many times we misrepresent him, one day God is going to make everything clear. And on the judgment day, God is going to serve true justice. It may seem like there's no justice right now, but God is a God of justice. Thank you so much. Remember, God loves you and he wants to be with you forever. Bye for now.